Hey y'all, it's Crystal here from Cristico Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the bell sleeves for the Belinda top. Now, if you haven't made the body of your sweater yet, you'll want to start with that video. So I'll link that up for you in the description. For the bell sleeves and sweater together, you're going to need a number three lightweight or DK yarn. I use Barocco Comfort DK here, which is 50% nylon and 50% acrylic. For extra small, you'll need seven balls or 1,246 yards. Small, 1,340 yards. Medium, 1,424 yards. Large, 1,602 yards. Extra large, 1,780 yards. 2x, 1,958 yards. 3x, 2,136 yards. 4x 2314 yards and 5x 2492 yards. Now that amount of yarn will make your sweater and your sleeves together. We're using a three and a half millimeter US size E hook for this and the sleeves are worked in the round and turned. So I'll show you how to do that. The stitch multiple is eight for the starting chain on our sleeves. For extra small, you'll chain 80, small 88, medium 96, large 104, extra large 104, 2x 112, 3x 120, 4x 128, and 5x 136. Just like the body of the sweater, the sleeves are worked from the bottom up, so this is going to be the width of the bell end. When you have made your chain, be sure to not twist it. and then join with the slip stitch to the first chain you made. Now I'm going to work into the back bumps. I'm going to twist, turn it around here. And in that same first stitch I just joined to, and start with my chain three or chain three alternative, and then double crochet back into that same chain space. In the very next chain space, place two double crochets. Then skip two chains, work two double crochets in the following. Oops, I split the yarn there. And two double crochets in the next chain. And then com continue your repeat around. Skip two chains, place two double crochets in each of the next two chains all the way back around. All right, once you get back around, you're going to skip the last two chains and slip stitch to the top of the third chain or the double crochet alternative you did. And then you're going to turn your work. To start the next row, we'll slip stitch over to the second double crochet. And then from here, you'll start with your chain three or alternative, double crochet in the same stitch two double crochet in the following. Top of the third chain there will be your first stitch. Then you're going to skip two, 
work two double crochets in the next, and then work two double crochets in the following, and continue your stitch pattern around. Slip stitching back to the first stitch or the top of the third chain, and remembering to turn after each round. Okay, here we are at the end of round two. So we have our last double crochet to skip here, and then we have our first double crochet of the previous row. We just finished our set of two. We're skipping over these, and we're slip stitching to the top of the third chain or the chain three alternative. And then we're turning our work, and we're going to repeat the last round by slip stitching over to the second double crochet and starting with our chain three or alternative. And we're just going to keep repeating this round now until we have eight rounds total or about three inches for your sleeve cuff here. You can of course add more or less rounds if you like to this and then we'll do our decreases and continue our sleeve pattern from there. Okay, now once we have worked our eight rounds or about three inches, we're going to start our single crochet decreases for two rounds. So we'll start, we have already turned, start with our chain one, and we'll start in this first double crochet here, placing a single crochet. That chain one doesn't count, this is our first single crochet. Then we will single crochet in each double crochet until we have made six single crochets. Then we will single crochet two together. Now we'll repeat that. Make six single crochets and then single crochet two together. And just repeat that around Okay, we're back around to the end. Just single crocheted six. Now the last single crochet two together of the row. And then we're going to join to the first single crochet we made with a slip stitch and turn our work. Now we're going to start this chain one, single crochet back into the same stitch. And then we're going to work four more. So we'll work five single crochets total. And then single crochet two together. And repeat that around, single crochet five, and then single crochet two together all the way around. Okay, at the end we'll do our last single crochet two together, join with a slip stitch to our first single crochet and turn. From here we're going to start back up with our regular stitch pattern. We'll do our chain three to start the row, double crochet back into that same spot, and then in the next stitch place two double crochets. Then we'll skip two, place two double crochets in the next, and then two double crochets in the following. And then keep repeating that around. At the end of the row, you slip stitch to the top of the third chain. Turn your work. 
Then we're ready to continue our stitch pattern. Just slip stitch over to the second double crochet, chain three, double crochet in the same stitch, two double crochets in the next, skip two, and repeat two double crochets in each of the next two stitches. Keep repeating that around, remembering to join and turn for each round. And you'll keep working your sleeve here until the full length of your sleeve is 12 inches or to the length you want. But this is designed to be um, three quarter sleeve somewhere in here. Of course, you can lengthen it or shorten it as you like. And then we'll sew it on to the side of the body of our top. Okay, to sew the sleeves to the sweater, we're going to turn our sweater inside out. So this is the wrong side. And keep the sleeve right side out. I've already pulled a long length of yarn from the last stitch and threaded my yarn needle. And I'm going to take my sleeve and I'm slipping it inside my sweater. I'm putting the armhole end through the armhole. So the length of the sleeve is on the inside of the sweater. Okay. So now I'm just going to match up my inside and my outside here, like so. So we're working on the wrong side of our work and you can use the mattress stitch or the whip stitch to sew these together. I'm a fan of the whip stitch. I'm matching up my faux seam where we turned and joined of the sleeve with the actual seam where we sewed together. And I'm going to either start right before or right after that seam join. In this case I'm going to start a little bit before. And I am working into the side of the rows here. So you'll just find two loops, two strands of yarn to go under. It can be one if you need it to be, but I like to have a strong seam. So I try for two loops when possible. So right there is the last. I have a loose stitch there from my tail. So I'm not going to go into that because it's loose. I'll go around to the one before it. And then back here into the same spot where I'm starting from. At the end, I'll weave this in securely. That's going to be the very last thing I do. And as I work, I'll continue to put these in shape so that I make sure I'm not leaving like gapping or something up here. You can pin it in four spots here, 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 and here if you're afraid you'll forget because you are working stitches to the side of rows. So you have to just make sure you keep it spaced evenly. And then we just work around going under the two loops of the stitches and try to get under two loops in the side of the rows that you're working in. Back and forth. My tail is a little long on this.
So here's our shoulder seam. I will make sure to go back around over that. You just want to make sure you don't go through like the stitch that you're sewing, like this loop from this seam. So I just like to reinforce that and make sure that I'm in a part of the stitch, not the seam that I sewed. You can just kind of check it like that and you'll see if it gets loose. Okay, back at the side seam, we're finished, but if you want to reinforce the underarm join here, you can go under those stitches another time or two. You also just, oh, you also don't want to make it too bulky, so you don't want to overdo it. But one more time through is usually fine. Okay, then you're going to cut your yarn and you're going to weave these in neatly. But quickly, I'm going to show you now. We're going to turn it right side out. There we go. We have a beautiful seam here, nice and strong for our sleeve.